So I invite us to just take a moment and to breathe deeply and to remember, smell the scent of roses, taste the salt of ocean air, feel the soft touch of the red veil and hear the cooing of the doves. She's calling you to her embrace, open, let us enter her mystery together. Hi everybody, this is Annalisa with Journey to the Goddess, where I regenerate ancient feminine wisdom for modern women. Today, I'm with the lovely Dr. Megan Rose. Dr. Megan Rose is a psychologist, scholar, priestess, and healer. She is also an initiated ceremonial magician, a Shakta Tantric, and a Celtic fairy faith practitioner. Welcome, and let's get started. Thank you, it's good to be here. Why is Mary Magdalene so important to you? So Mary Magdalene, for me, is an inevitability. She is the Western esoteric mystery goddess of the 21st century. She holds the interiority of the Christa energy or the Christa, Christos energy and is a sacred womb goddess. Her potency and her power for women, particularly women that were raised in a Christian tradition, it's, it's unquantifiable how important she is for us. Her presence and her sort of reemergence here in the 21st century and latter 20th century is kind of coming at a critical juncture on our planet when the reemergence of the priestesshoods and the reemergence of women's spirituality and women's ways of knowing and, and embodied ways of being are in dire need. I personally believe that the Magdalene has reemerged as both a patron deity as well as a esoteric lineage to initiate women and, and some men into this interior alchemical awakening of the divine within. A lot of my Magdalene research has centered around this idea that her co-creative union with Yeshua was a, an, an act of apotheosis both for, for his awakening and also of for her awakening and then by the two of them and their divine union coming together, the awakening of, of the planet, the awakening of, of humanity. What is the significant piece of her regeneration for the culture today? I believe that Magdalene's method for cultural regeneration is through sacred sexuality and divine embodiment practices. The church has at least indicated that they no longer believe she was a prostitute. I, I actually think that it doesn't really matter either way that, that that kind of work, sacred prostitution, is really holy and sacred transmission and activation kind of work. And if that was part of her story, I believe she was doing it in a, in a very conscious and very intentional kind of way. For a Western culture, and particularly for women in a Western culture that have been so shamed and denigrated in our bodies and separated from our bodies and allowed to have a spirituality that is like from the, the chest up, Magdalene is regenerating our wombs. She's regenerating our vitality. She's regenerating, you know, to borrow a term from the tantrics, our shakti. In fact, I don't see much of a difference in my own internal cosmology between Shakti and Magdalene. Because if you're understanding that it's this, you know, transmission kind of potent energy and the ways that we would describe activating potency 
um, energy in the Western terms are very similar to the way that Shakti is described, Shakti Kundalini is described in the Tantric terms. And so to me, Magdalene is regenerating us in our womb space, in our, not just our, like, giving birth, but our creative cauldron of feminine consciousness. When women become connected and awakened and activated in their, in their pelvic region, in their sexuality, and when they allow that not to just stay in the pelvis, but to actually move all the way up and then back down around, and, and circulate that energy and it becomes this vivifying wheel of alchemical transformation through the cauldron of the body. When that happens and, and women are doing that and men are doing that en masse, a kind of sovereignty and individuation happens in our psycho-spiritual bodies that I think was very scary to the early church and is why Magdalene was written out of uh, the, the early church history. Because the last things the patriarchy want is for people to be autonomous and sovereign and their own spiritual authority. I'd love to hear you also speak more to the significance of the feminine as womb bear and the part that she plays in that transformative process. The idea of the womb as the cauldron of transformation becomes a really powerfully charged concept that isn't just about the physical womb in a woman's body. Although I will tell you that there are tantric womb mysteries in the Shakta lineage that work very much with the physical womb. And also in the Taoist traditions as well, the Taoist healing love traditions. So we have the, the physical womb mysteries, but then we also have the sort of esoteric or cauldron mysteries of transformation. This idea that we go inside into the in darkenment, into this dark space where we look at the thonic or the underworld or the ancestral work, which is, is anything but scary and dangerous. It's like the, the starry night of space or the void of space where all potentiality comes from. And so the womb mysteries, as I understand Magdalene to sit within that, is that, you know, in many ways, Ye Yeshua held a very exterior preaching, teaching, going out, doing wonders and miracles and all these things. And um, Magdalene's mysteries were this interior sacred cauldron of transformation which allowed for the christos to gestate which and the christos slash christa or the christics i guess you can if you want to make a gender neutral and if you follow the thread of some of the cathar teachings and the holy blood holy grail some of that research then she was also the physical womb bearer right their divine union came together and created anywhere from one to three children depending on the tradition you're looking at The Magdalene teaches us to go down and deep into the earth and into our bodies and into all of the different strata of earth. And if you're in the dark long enough, you begin to see in the dark. And often what you see is not what your normal vision would perceive if somebody were to light a candle or turn the lights on. You begin to see the numinous realms or the perception of extraordinary reality and the perception of the spiritual self or the spiritual sight. Simply sitting in that quiet, still place, slowing everything way down and relaxing there to allow the visions, to allow the guidance, to allow the contact to arise. It's a very radical idea. This medicine, this offering of women's embodied spiritual technologies that are part of our reclaiming and part of our remembering and refashioning. 
for a number of years, I was participated in the Mary Magdalene Easter service in Marin, California, where I was part of a priestess group. There were, there were sort of a Stations of the Cross, and it was Easter through the eyes of Mary Magdalene. And we were the priestesses that were the priestesses of the tomb. And you, when you would get to the Station of, of the Cross that was the empty tomb, we had anointing priestesses that were in there anointing people. I sort of originated a role where we had a woman sit covered in a red veil as the Magdalene transmitting that energy. And I began to do that role because that as I was um, also concurrently training in Shakta Tantric practices, this is one of the things that the Tantrics do and do really well is this idea that humans can bring forward the deity and, and offer blessing and offer darshan that way. You're in this liminal space and people are having this experience of her energy in a very tangible way. I would offer that as inheritors of a post-Christian goddess awakened feminist spirituality, it's our job to transform our world through, through the reshaping and reframing of our religious stories and myths to make them more inclusive and empowering. So I invite us to step into our power as co-creators of our collective story by resurrecting and reclaiming the goddess Mary Magdalene as a Krista. Mm -hmm. uh, just as we were talking about, we can tell the story however we wanna tell it and stories are often only recorded by the literate, wealthy, educated, scholarly, usually men throughout history. So let's tell a new story and let's tell a story that reclaims and, and places women's, women's embodied experience as a tool and a vehicle for awakening divinity. Take a moment, breathe deeply again and imagine Imagine a world where Christianity was the story of how two people joining together in sacred union can co-create the Christos, the awakened divine human consciousness. Imagine what the last 2,000 years might have looked like had that been the dominant narrative. Now bring that knowledge forward to the today, this moment, right now. See this story now becoming an established belief, spreading from heart to heart, creating a new trajectory for humanity, the true second coming of the Christ. Her consciousness now resurrected and reinstated in her rightful place, sovereign unto herself, Magdalene. So be it and so it is. Thank you, Dr. Megan Rose. Can you please let the audience know how they can find out more about you and your work? Yeah, you can visit my website, which is meganrosephd.com. I work with people one-on-one, -on -one and I have some small group programs that I'll be launching this year. And one of the things that I'm really passionate about is helping people step into these divine embodiment practices, figuring out what are the best practices that we can take and use to vitalize ourselves and, and allow more of that to come out, more of our radiant potential to come out. And part of my work I call normalizing the paranormal, but I'm working with people really to help uh, validate ground, and then cultivate these extraordinary gifts, which uh, divine embodiment is certainly an extraordinary gift, um, and experiences uh, when people are having these sort of numinous contacts. I'd be happy to support anyone that watches this in exploring those realms. Thank you so much for viewing, everybody. If you liked what you saw, then I encourage you to like this video, to comment, 
to subscribe to the channel and of course to share the videos because sharing is caring, right? And don't forget to watch every other video in this series. And if you're looking for other ways that you can support the channel, then I encourage you to head on over to my Patreon page where you can learn more about membership and all the benefits that come included with membership. So thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate all of your support from the bottom of my heart. Until next time, ciao.